Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a dust catcher or a trap to catch the pastel dust on our easels. This is something we want to do for a couple reasons. For health, we want to minimize the particles getting airborne. And two, we want to keep the studio clean and our pastels clean. So I'm going to demonstrate three different ways that you might go about making a trap. The first method is for my big easel, my big backing board. It's, a, it's going to be permanently attached to the backing board, so it's not, it's not very portable. But it's something I want to have, and I probably make a new one every year or so. So it's time. Okay, so first I need a piece of foam cord that is cut to the exact size of my backing board. And so here I have a piece of black foam cord. Yours doesn't have to be black. It can be white or gray or whatever you want. I'm using the, the uh, typical standard width, 3 16 width. So um, I'm going to show you it just fits exactly on my backing board here for my easel. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the rest of the materials that we'll be needing. We'll also be needing a few more pieces of foam core. We need two lengths that are the same width or, or length of the backing board. One piece is four inches high, and this piece is three inches deep. So we'll go something like this. And you need two pieces that are end caps for each end. Of course, this will be individual, the length based on the size of your backing board. All right, a couple more things we'll be needing. You need a straight edge to cut the foam core. I highly recommend cutting the foam core with X-Acto blade and X-Acto knife rather than a paper cutter or scissors. This is the safest method and I will be demonstrating how I go about doing that. You'll also need some duct tape. I'm using black duct tape because I'm using black backing board. So, um, you know, but it, it can be the silver tape. It, it just depends on, on how fancy you want to get. And then I just need a pencil for marking. And then I also have this other, this is just regular uh, masking tape that's going to help me put together the, uh, the pieces before I use the duct tape. And lastly, you're going to want some Reynolds wrap, some aluminum foil. Okay? All right, let's get moving. Okay, a couple things about um, cutting. Uh, just safety-wise, uh, I'm using an X-Acto knife. And um, the safest thing that you can do, the best thing that you can do for safety with an X-Acto knife is have a new sharp blade. So uh, I always make sure I have plenty of these available when I'm doing a project such as this. So let me get this in here and um, tighten this up really well. Uh, I'm also using a cork backed ruler, metal ruler, and this um, is very important in cutting as well. So I'm just going to measure off my, so I want two pieces. In my case, I need two pieces that are three inches by four inches. So I'm going to come along and measure my three inches all the way down my, my, my piece here that I've got. I'm going to set my metal edge along my measured line. And I'm going to keep my, I'm going to hold tight with my fingers and I'm going to keep my fingers well out of it. And with my X-Acto knife, I'm going to come along with a light touch, a light cut. So several light cuts are better than one hard, you know, struggling cut. So if I just come along here, like so, easy peasy, there's my piece, and I've got a nice clean cut. Okay, so now I need two pieces that are four inches in length. I'm going to come along here and get those. Just measure eight, four, eight. So now again, I'm going to put my metal edge here. This is from art school days. We really learned how to do this in our 
design classes. Lots of people lost parts of or ends of fingers. So don't want that to happen to you. Okay, so nice clean cut. So I've got my two two end caps. And it's really good to have these self-healing boards. Um, one, one thing that's really um, to think about, you can get these at, in, at uh, Michael's or Joann's Fabrics. Um, they're the same kind of thing as a, um, for sewing. So it's a self-healing cutting board. So they're actually a little cheaper at those places than they are at the art supplier, so sometimes. Okay, so now we are ready to start assembling our trap. Okay, now we're going to put this together and the first thing that I want to do is I want to position the foam core against my main backing board. So to do that, I'm going to use the masking tape. I'm just these are, this is just to just to position the foam core on this board. I'm just going to get it lined up really nice. Just the way I want it. Put a couple of pieces just to hold it. Got that. Maybe one more. All right. That's really tidy. Okay, now I'm going to take the thinner of the two uh, pieces, the lengths, and I'm going to position it against the back. See, it's all the way to the back. It's not, not here, all the way here. This will make it sturdier. I'm going to get that on here. Take a couple pieces of my masking tape and get this positioned really nice. In the end, I got it. Like so, like so. taking a little time to, to do it nice because I'm going to have this for another year or so. so. Now that I've got that, what I want to do is get my mask, my duct tape and run a line of duct tape along this back edge here. It's going to make it really sturdy. Okay, now I'm going to this is duct tape and I want to get it you know position it so it's kind of in the middle here so the dust kind of makes the duct tape a little hard to stick so you, you know you got to work at it a little bit get this so I want to make sure I'm on the edge here clean it up Okay, so I'm going to place a couple more pieces of duct tape just for stability to hold this really well onto my backing board. It doesn't look that pretty, but it's going to help make this trap really stable. And when I move this board around, which I do quite often, um, it's going to keep it really stable. Maybe one more down here. Whoop. All right. I feel really good about that. That's great. Okay, now next step. Okay, now I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to set it up here on my easel ledge so that I can assemble the rest of it. Got this really nice. I got it almost ready to go. So now I've got my um, four inch piece of foam core and I'm gonna set that 
right up here. And I'm going to get some more of the regular masking tape and just to place it before I use the duct tape, just to hold it in place. Got it up. Reposition it. I really want to make sure I have it right at the end so I can get those end caps on there really nice. Okay. All right, I want to make sure I definitely long enough, and I do. Make sure I don't mess it up. Okay, I'm going to split the difference between the top and the underneath. Come along to the end here. Pretty good. And I'm make sure I can get it underneath here. Really careful. Make it nice. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm gonna have to look at it for a year or so, so <laughs> make sure it's okay. Alright. It's pretty good. And those end caps are going to stabilize the whole thing. Okay. So now I need my X-Acto knife, and I'm going to cut these ends. Nice and clean. A nice, sharp X-Acto knife makes this process really easy. There we go. Okay, let's see how I did here on measuring. Yeah, not bad. Okay, so I'm going to just place this right here. Put a couple pieces of tape before I get the duct tape going. All right, now I'm going to go ahead because I'm going to just make a little seam here. I'll clean this up with the X-Acto knife just a minute. I'm going to come underneath here just to make it a little stronger, kind of like folding a package here. Just make it a little stronger. Right, some more duct tape. Other side. Come on, just fold it. So, again, it doesn't have to be pretty on the back side. Pretty good. So now we can just trim this off. That's pretty good. Yeah, maybe I'll trim this too, just to get a little cleaner looking. There we go. Okay. So we repeat this process on the other side, and we'll be good. Okay, the last step in building this trap is to line it with aluminum foil. By lining it with aluminum foil, I'm going to allow myself to, to roll up the, the aluminum foil when it gets kind of crummy and full of dust a couple times a year. So um, I'm going to just take a piece that is, again, the whole length. That's just about it. A little bit longer. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it a few times so it fits in there really nice. No exact science to this one. Okay. Tuck this in here. I'm going to put a couple. 
couple pieces of tape to kind of hold it in place. And so when this gets real full, just come in and crumple it up. And this makes this whole thing a lot more functional because to take this whole piece off and dump it out, it gets really dusty and dirty and this um, makes it a lot easier and cleaner process. to hold it in place. I've got a nice new dust catcher. All right, there are a couple of simpler versions of the same idea and you can just fashion with a cardboard box and it doesn't have to be pretty and line your box with um, aluminum foil and just set your board inside. Thus, this is very portable. Another option, this is what I do when I'm plein air painting. I just take along a piece of aluminum foil and make a little envelope with the aluminum foil to catch the dust. And this keeps my pastels clean and is really portable. I can even pack some aluminum foil when I'm traveling. And I'm sure you can come up with your own version of a dust catcher. There's lots of things that you could find at the hardware store that would serve um, pretty much the same purpose. Um, so I hope this was helpful and um, thanks for watching. Hi there, thanks for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. It helps us out and click the bell icon to get notifications. We have lots more coming for you.